It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a dinosaur. Well, it is a bird, and it's also a dinosaur because birds are dinosaurs. But this one was very prolific, with over eight different species in the genus Bathornis being found across four different states and spanning 17 million years of time. This makes Bathornis one of the most successful and prolific birds after the extinction that killed the non-avian dinosaurs. But what the hell was it, at least as far as birds are concerned? First described to science in 1927, Bathornis was only known from part of a foot bone, but slowly more fossils were found, including in 1944, when a new fossil was found and described not as Bathornis, but as a genus of vulture. It was named Eocathartes, and was thought to be related to the vultures, although entirely flightless. And this is something that would stand, the flightless part, although it was later found that it wasn't actually a vulture and that it was a Bathornis, which wasn't found to be very closely related to vultures at all. And the reason researchers were able to say that it wasn't related to vultures were because of some of its very specific adaptations, including one of them being related to its name. Bathornis means tall bird, and it was tall, with the tallest species being even taller than I am, reaching up to two meters in height, or a little over six feet. But Bathornis wasn't just any ordinary tall bird. It wasn't something like an ostrich. Instead, it had a very large hooked beak, which would have been very useful for eating and hunting prey. So Bathornis probably lived a lot like the modern secretary birds of Africa. But even the largest of the secretary birds is only about comparable in size to the very smallest of the genus Bathornis. And unlike the secretary birds, even those very small Bathornis still cannot fly. But at the same time as Bathornis in South America, there was another set of birds doing very similar things, and these were the forest rackets. But Bathornis isn't one of these. Although it and some of its closest relatives, like Paracrax, which are all grouped together in the family Bathornidae, do have this group, the forest rackets, as some of their closest relatives. And that's because that South American lineage, the one that led to the forest rackets, also led to another lineage, the Syriamus. So the common ancestor between the Syriamus, forest rackets, and Bathornis probably could fly, and that's part of how they got on North America and South America. And then the forest rackets and the Bathornids both separately evolved the ability not to fly, specifically so that they could spend more time hunting on the ground. The Syriamus, though, they can still fly. But what's more interesting is their hunting strategies, because they're absolutely vicious, using very swift head strikes to take down their prey. And it's very likely that this vicious streak is part of what helped Bathornis be so successful. It was able to survive for over 17 million years as a genus on North America, where many mammalian predators were very rapidly evolving, including some of the first carnivorans and the very cat-like Nimravids. So Bathornis was a very strange, very tall bird that lived in North America for over 17 million years, and throws a wrench into the idea that the forest rackets were only able to become dominant predators in South America because there weren't many mammalian predators there at the time. Instead, Bathornis helps to show that even after the extinction that killed the non-avian dinosaurs, it wasn't the age of mammals without a fight. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. This was actually one of the more interesting what the hell is this is that we've done, um, and that's because I just think that this bird and its family are very, very interesting. I really hope there's more research done on them because I do think they're interesting. Again, I'd like to thank the Patreons who did vote on this and it was a tie, so the person who voted first got credit. So if you wanna try and influence some of these in the future, you can find the Patreon down below. With that in mind, be safe, take care, wear a mask, and don't go extinct.